Fire can also be detected using resistive type detectors. And uh, there's two that are, are synonymous with, with aviation. One is the Fenwall sensing element, and the other is the Kitty sensing element, named after the two um, manufacturing companies. And they work on the same principle, but just have uh, small differences. So, so basically you have a conductor and it's in between uh, a dielectric material. So in, in this case, we, we consider the dielectric as, uh, as, a, as an insulator with a negative temperature coefficient. So uh, what do I mean by negative temperature coefficient? Well, it means that if the temperature increases, the resistance dropped off. So I've, I've drawn it as a straight line, but typically it might be something like that. Okay, so if, you know, if the resistance is this value at this temperature, it will have dropped off to this value at, at this temperature. So what happens is, um, you know, if we, if we heat up the, the dielectric, you know, then current can drift across from the conductor here to the to the case and complete a circuit or in in this case you know if current is coming in here coming along if we get a fire say at this point this, this area warms up and the current can drift across the dielectric because the resistance has dropped due to the heat and uh, can close off our our circuit so that's that's the basic principle of them so let's just look at uh, one of them in um, as an example. So what you might have is a circuit like this, uh, and I, I'm only Im imagining this. I don't know for sure, but you could have a, a 28 volt uh, supply. So you know the current's coming along, and let's say we we start to overheat. Let's say in this in this area here, it starts to get very warm. Well, the resistance of the dielectric will reduce around here, so the current will will drift across, and will come down through the wire here and through this resistor, and we'll get a voltage here equal to whatever that current is times this resist this resistance, and this current here. I will be dependent upon how hot this is. So remember our our temperature coefficient, so I'll be coming down or something like that. Okay, so that's R. So the warmer it is, the less resistance or the more current. So if we have this voltage, and if it's an overheat, you know, overheats tend to happen um, gradually, you know, so it tends to be a slow build up. And if we looked at the slope of that, you know, it's not that high. So if you integrate, you know, let's say the slope is, um, you know, 2t. Where time is on the x-axis. So integrate that, let's say I get 2. And we can send that 2 to this, to this controller here, and it will know that if it's, you know, below a particular value, then it's, a, it's an overheat and put on the overheat light. If we had a fire, though, you know the the resistance would would change um, uh, quite quickly. So the current would come across the dielectric there. There would be a lot of current, so we get a bigger voltage, and it will happen at a much quicker time. Okay, it happened this time here. So the slope here, let's say, might be you know 15 t. Again, T is on the x-axis. So if I integrate that, I get 15. So the controller here will say, oh, 15, um, you know, that's that's a very sharp increase in temperature. You know, that must be uh, that that must be a fire. So it will uh, it will set the the fire warning system. If the temperatures um, subside and uh, you know, reduce back to normal temperature, well, then the resistance will go back to normal and, you know, it'll become an insulator again and then current won't drift across the dielectric. So we'll get zero voltage here, so we'll get no warning. So it'll reset itself. 
What's good about these type of systems in comparison, say, to the lecture pneumatic, is if the system breaks. So let's say, let's say we get a break in the system here. Well, now the current is no longer able to go beyond the break, okay, because we have a break here. And what that means is this side of the system will no longer work. But this side here can continue to work because current can still, you know, can still f travel along here and drift across the dielectric and, and come back. So even if we get a break in the system, some of it will still work. Whereas in an electro-pneumatic system, you know, if we got a break, all the gas would come out and, and the system would, wouldn't work at all. Whereas at least with this, you may have um, some um, protection uh, in, the, in the system. Okay, so that is uh, resistive type fire detectors.